for tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2016 Spring Camp Teaching and Deliverance Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Friday afternoon, March the 25th, 2016, Jane Williams is the speaker of the service teaching on A Rise of the Horsemen. Now that I call um, Sister Jean Williams up, and she's going to bring us, uh, she's going to bring us the word of the Lord. Hello, everybody. Hello. It's a blessing to be here. I give God the praise and give me the honor to come and speak to you today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I cover myself in this building with the blood of Jesus Christ. I ask the giant warring angels to protect us and to come and assist me as I teach your word. Lord, your word says in John 3.30, he must increase, but I must decrease. And Lord, I decrease today, Lord God. I ask that you take completely over, Lord, none of me and all of you today. The Holy Spirit, I ask that you open up the people's ears today. And let them have a, a learning spirit today. Give them a spirit of learning, Lord. And even as I teach, give me a spirit of learning. And Lord, I thank you and I give you the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. I want to talk with you today about a rise of the horsemen. This was a dream that God has given me. In the dream, I dreamed that a big horse, a brown reddish horse, was sitting in the living room. And I was asking the Lord in the dream, what does this mean? What does a brown reddish horse mean? God began to reveal to me about this dream. But I began to go into Habakkuk, the second chapter, verse 2 and 3, and it says, Write the vision and make it plain upon tablets, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So I said, Lord, what is this speaking to me? What is this saying? And the Lord revealed to me that we're in the season and we're in the time of the brown horse. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean that we're in the season and the time of the brown horse? I say, Lord, are you saying that I must buy a horse? I must ride a horse? I never rode a horse before. I'm not really into horses. So what are you seeing? There's something prophetic that you want to say to your people today. So I prayed and I fasted and, and I told my husband, I say, the Lord has a word for his people. So I took some time out and I began to seek the Lord. And I said, Lord, when I go and speak to your people, I pray for a right now word that would penetrate the heart of the people, that would cause your people to change. And the Lord gave me this message. And I said, Lord, what does brown really mean? So he took me in an area and showed me in some scriptures about what the color brown means. The color brown means board of the spirit. So I said, Lord, what are you saying, board of the spirit? My people have a board spirit. And what he is saying today to you is he want to fill that spirit with his love, with his righteousness, because he is a God that demands holiness, and holiness is the only way. Amen? 
The brown horse is rising on the earth today. It is already here. So what does this mean? Horse represent spiritual forces of God, which signifies God's people. Heavenly horses represent judgment and sexual dramatic judgment for the sake of violent purification. The Lord is calling for purification in his people. The Lord has given us they come to Bible camp. And each time we come here to the camp to receive from the Lord, the Lord don't want us to take this lightly that we just come to a service and we just write down a couple of scriptures. He wants us to apply those scriptures to our life. We're in the time, saints of God, of valid purification. You can look all around and see what is going on. You already know. I told my husband the other day, I said, have you noticed the time in the season that we're in? I noticed after Sunday leaves and Monday comes in, it seems like within 24 hours, here's Friday. We have a swiftly time that is shifting and moving and God's people eyes needs to open up. God is saying something prophetically to his people. And God sent his word. And he expects you to take the word and apply it to your situation today. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't want to take your word lightly. I want to be a person who's after your heart. A God-fearing woman who is after you, Lord God. Because when I run this race, Lord God, I want you to see your holiness, your purification. Because this is what he demands from us today. The horse represents power and strength and fleshly carnality. Yes. That's what brown represents. God want to take that carnal flesh and he want to purify that flesh today. He wants you to be changed today. What he expecting out of this camp for us today is to take what we have received from this camp and apply. He wants us to continue yes. to yearn after holiness because the Bible tells us that without holiness, no man will see his face. It is time for us to be real. It is time for us to take our purification serious. Because we don't even know what time. We don't know. So the horse also means strength, authority, and power, and battle. And Proverbs, the 21st chapter, verse 31 says, The horse is prepared against the day of battle. But faith is is in the Lord. In God, we are strong. And we are powerful. But God wants to deal with those things that are secret. The secret issues that cover up. That we want to hold on to. That we want to nourish. That we want to um, appeal in front of people that we got it all together. But God said, it's time to take the veil off of your face. It's time for you to come clean. He wants you clean today. He wants to purify this flesh and bring you to a place of pureness, of holiness. So you can walk into the things of God. Because as I look out here today, I see men and women that wants to be used of God mightily. And here affects what God wants to do for you. He has a heart to, to guide you into the things that you want from him. He wants to move you into that place because all of us have a calling on our life. And all of us want to be used of the Lord. And God desires to use each and every one of you. Each and every one of you today. In Jeremiah, the 8th chapter, verse 4 through 7, and I'll be reading out the Amplified Bible. I love the Amplified Bible because it breaks it down. It gives you more words than... I love the King James um, Bible as well, but the Amplifiers really touches me. And it reads in Jeremiah 8, chapter, verse 4 through 7, and it says, More over you, Jeremiah, shall say to them, Thus said the Lord, shall men fall and not rise up again. Shall one turn away from God and not repent and return to him. Why then is this people of Jerusalem turned away with a perpetual turn away 
from me. They hold fast to deceit and idolatry. They refuse to repent and return to God. I have listened and heard, but they have not spoken aright. No man repents of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? Everyone turns to his individual courses as the horse rushes like a torrent into battle. Here's what God's saying today. He gave me the horse because the horse represents power, strength. He wants to take the facade off our face. This is what he wants to do today. He has given you authority and power to trample over the enemy. But now he wants to deal with that inner man, that inner issue that is going on within. You see, we can talk a good game. And we can say we love the Lord with all our heart. But God say, I realize that you love me today. But I want to do something for you today. Aren't you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Yeah. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying. He wants you to be free. He wants you to be free in Him. Aren't you tired? Are you tired of running today? I told the Lord a long time ago that I'm tired. I'm tired of running from the devil. Because when I was out there in the world, I ran for the devil. But now I'm in God's kingdom. And I'm living for Jesus. And I'm going to give everything that i got to run this race. Because this is what my God respects of us. And this is what we should yearn and desire. So I'm coming to you today with a pure heart, with the heart to give you the word of God, that it may penetrate in your heart, that you will receive what the Lord has for you today, that this is not just another message where to make you feel good, but this is a message that is going to get down to the joint and the marrow of the bones that make you say yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. I desire you, Lord. I want to be changed. I no longer want to be this person again. No more of me, but all of you, Lord. Come into my heart. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Show me the way. So I looked up the characteristics of the horse. And God gave me several things, but I'm going to give you about six of them. About five or six. And one of them is, the horse is a prey animal for predators. And his best defense is to flee. See, we are a predator to the enemy. And he desires to attack us. But in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says in the Amplify, Be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind. Be vigilant and cautious at all times. For the enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce and hunger, seeking someone to cease upon and devour. This is what the enemy wants to do to you. But the Holy Spirit said, I have given you a way of an escape. And that escape is through me. You don't have to stay in the same shape that you are in. You have me. I died on the cross for you. I did it all for you. So whatever you want, whatever you desire, take it today with a pure heart. The next one is, the horse is a herd animal. Without the protection of the herd, it is difficult for the horse to survive in the wild. The horse lives in a group of security, protection, peace, and a great chance of survival. Many eyes and ears assure that a threat or predator can be spotted quickly. Also because of safety, a prey animal needs to move a lot. But the Holy Spirit said, I have given my people Psalms 91. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall hide in the shadow of the Almighty. He has given you that. It's yours. So he wants you to take that word. Get it in your, in your heart. And apply the word. David says in Psalm that he had to encourage himself. How do we encourage ourselves? We take the word, we apply the word, and we take it out when we need it, and we apply it to our situation and our circumstances. This is what he has given us. His people. The next one is, the horse is also a social animal. 
Real friendships can grow between two horses. Some friendship can last a lifetime. But in James, the second chapter, verse 23, in the Amplifier says, And so, the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed in, adhered to, trusted in, and relied on God. And this was accounted to him as righteousness, as formity to God's will and thought and deed, and he was called God's friend. I have news for you today. You are a friend of God. He loves you today. He appointed you for such a time as this. And every one of you that is sitting here today, it was an appointed time for you. It was destined for you. So I say to you today, you need to be asking the Holy Spirit. You allowed me to get here to Lake Hamilton Bible Camp. It was some sacrifices. Some of you really didn't have the money to get here, but you made a sacrifice. And one thing about the Holy Spirit, he will remember that sacrifice. But what he wants you to do today is ask him, what is my purpose? What do you want out of me? What do you want me to do? I'm here. Just open up your heart. Talk to me. I'm here. The next one, horses are a creature of habit with an internal body clock. Grazing occurs at a certain set time and they know when it's their scheduled time to rest. And Proverbs, the 14th chapter, verse 33 in the Amplified says, Wisdom rests silently in the mind and heart of him who has understanding. But that which is in the inward part of self-confidence, fools just make known. So if the horse know the time and the season to rest, my people should know the time and the season to rest. Amen. So God is saying, rest in me today. I'm here. I am your provider. I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'm Jehovah to sicken you. I'm the God of righteousness. I want to do a new thing in you today. I want to show you my hidden secret mysteries. I want to take you to another level in me. Aren't you tired of being in the shape that you're in? Are you ready to go to that next level in God? Well, in order to go into that next level, I need to do some violent purification in you because we're in a time and a season that God is moving upon the earth and the brown horse is moving and it has already started. Yeah. So what God is saying to you today, I got to move quickly on some things in you in order to take you into that next season, in order for you to go through the things that I have already ordained for you. Yeah. The next one. A horse has special needs, and needs of the horse must be met to avoid physical and behavior problems. The Bible says in Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 19 in the King James Version, But my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. There's no need to worry. Why are you worrying? I got you. You are mine. I paid the price a long time ago. There's no needs, no more. But if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and my righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. He wants to add his greatness on you. He wants to do a new thing in you. And what I sense the Lord is saying to you today, many of you is out here, Want to know what is my call? What have you called me for? What is the reason that I am here on this earth? I know I'm here for a purpose because you made me. And I know there are some things that you want me to do, but I don't know which way to go. I don't know where to turn. I don't know what to do. But God wants to answer those unanswered questions that is lingering in your mind. Because all of you are here for a purpose in a season. Yes. And it is time for that purpose to be, made, to be made known. As I begin to study the horse, I read how he submits 
his own will and learn the ways of his master. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? He wants you to submit your will to him because he is the master. He wants it all today. He wants every part of you, every being of you. He wants you to lay it down at the altar. The horse is controlled to obey by a harness that attached around his shoulders. The harness could only move where and when his master spoke. And unless the master spoke, he stood still. The horse is disciplined and stands still quiet. Wait for the voice of the master. So what is the Lord saying to you out of this? The Lord is saying in Psalms, the 46 chapter, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. He wants you to be still. Don't be hasty to make a move of your own thinking. But he wants you to trust him, seek him before you make a move. Some of you in the valley of decision are making some moves. But the Lord says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I want to guide you. I want to move you into those things, into those special places. But I want you to seek me for direction. Are you tired of running? Are you tired of doing it with your own will and your strength? So allow me to be your strength. Allow me to work a work in you. Because I am your master. And I made you. And I know you. And I want to guide you into those things. The harnesses brings the Son of God into an absolute confinement to the perfect will of God. That is the purpose of the harness. So God want to put his harness around your shoulders, around your neck. And he want to guide you into some things. He want to shape and mold you into his image and likeness of him. So allow him to take the harness and wrap it around your neck. And guide you into this life that he knows. Amen. The Bible says in Jeremiah 46 chapter verse 4. Harness the horse and get up, ye horsemen. So I say to you today, get up, ye horsemen, and ride. Take your position. Trust the Lord to guide you into this life. We are being conformed through much tribulation and fiery tests. So we can be formed into the image and the Son of God. So what is God saying? This is why this is vital for you to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because when we have a a relationship with the Holy Spirit, He leads us. He guides us. And when we go through our fiery trials, we understand that God is doing something within us. Some of you today is going through fiery trials. You don't understand what is going on. You've been attacked in your finances. Your children have been attacked. Your home been attacked. Your job has been in attack. God, what are you doing in this situation? What God wants you to understand is to seek him through your situation. Seek him through your circumstances. And he would give you the answer. The answer is not in your friend. The answer is not in everybody. The answer is in the Lord Jesus Christ who rules and reigns among this earth. He is King of kings and Lord of lords and he will forever be king. There is none like him and there will never be none like him. He is God Almighty. He is the first. He is the last. He is the beginning and he is the end. And he will never change because he is not a God that changes. But he is a God of preparation. That he want to prepare you for this valid purification. In 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 4 through 5. But before I read that, we are in the days of his preparation. The day in which he is preparing us to unmask hidden sins, hidden agendas, so he can pour forth his glory. He desires to pour forth his glory in you. And 2 Corinthians 10, chapter, verse 4 through 5, in the King James Version, says, 
the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God who are pulling down the strongholds, casting down those imaginations and every high thing that is sought itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought of obedience of Christ. So every time the enemy comes and speaks lies to you, you are nobody. You are never amount up to anything. God cannot use you. You remind him that I am somebody. And you cast down those imaginations and those thoughts. And you remind them that who you are in Jesus Christ. See, we have to know our position in the Lord. And we have to know who we are in Jesus Christ. It's time to take your position, use your authority, execute judgment on the enemy, because he desired to do it to you. As a Christian, spiritual warfare is living a life of consecration, obedience, and fellowship with God in such a way that we enable God to effectively deal with the evil working within us. It's a life of concentration. In Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 12, in the King James Version says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, of this world, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, which is a Satan. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Some of you here may be struggling, and I don't know what your struggle is, but you know. Whether it's addiction, drug addiction, pornography, alcohol, rage, anger problems, personality disorders, or whatever the situation may be, Jesus Christ desires for you to be set free. That is the purpose of it. He has given you a way of an escape, and that is through him, friends. God has a plan for your life, for your ministry, and he wants it to be known today. But before God can commit this great and tremendous ministry in your life, in your hands, you must submit yourself to the discipline of the Lord. Letting him truly be the Lord of your entire life, not part of it, not some of it, but your entire life. This is what he wants. We have long since dealt with the question of open sin. But now God is dealing with the inward rebellion of our own wills. He wants it all. He wants the deep issues, the deep things that you hold on to. That you think that you can just hide from everybody. You're powerful, you're anointed, but you're torn inside. He wants to deal with those issues because he wants you free today. See, it's an old saying, say, you can hide from man. But the Bible says, God eyes go to and fro along the earth. What does that mean? You can get by with nothing. You're deceived. It's time to surrender it. You cannot hide from him. You can hide. I used to hear this old saying, you can hide from man. And even at home when I go home, my sister and my friends know that my life center around Jesus Christ. And when I come around and walk into the room, everybody's scattering and moving drinks and moving whatever they got. <laughs> so I told them, I said, hey, hey, hold, hold up. I'm not Jesus Christ. I can't put you in a hell or heaven. Yes. Thank you for the respect and the anointing that's on my life. Thank you. But I'm not the one that who you hide from. Jesus Christ is the one. He sees everything. You're deceived if you're hiding from me. I'm not the one. But I also realize they respect the anointing on my life. But I have to make it clear. I would not take the glory. Amen. Only Jesus Christ takes the glory. See, if we take the glory, there's a such thing as a premature death. Because the Holy Spirit, he's a jealous God. And he said that he would not have any other gods before him. So if you're taking the anointing and the glory for yourself, you need to repent right now and release it quickly. 
Because as I said earlier, we're in a time of violent purification. But he's coming in to purify those things that he want to be Lord in. In Proverbs the 14th chapter verse 12 in the Amplified Bible 3, there is a way which seems right to a man and appears straight before him. But at the end of it, the way is death. So what you're doing in secret may seem right to you because nothing has been exposed. I got by yesterday. I got by last night. I can try again. There's a way to seem right to a man. So in your own flesh, you think you are right. See, that's the trick of the enemy. And we have to understand and know Satan schemes, tricks, plots, scams. We have to understand what we're dealing with. He's smart. So we have to be smarter. When a horse is disciplined, he follows the master voice and submits to him. But the disciplined ones, those in God harness, know better than to move before they hear the voice of the master. What am I saying? When you're rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ, when he's Lord of your life, you don't make a move until you hear the voice of the Lord. And John, the 10th chapter, verse 3 says, And the sheep hears my voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and led them out. Hallelujah. See, when we're in Jesus Christ, and we have a relationship with him, we hear that still, soft voice that leads us, that guides us. The Holy Spirit will speak and say, don't go down that road. It's trouble. If you don't listen to that voice, then you're going to head down the wrong road, and there's trouble. Some of you out here today desire to know his voice. What does it take to know his voice? Time spent with him, consecrating yourself, desiring him to know him. He desires for you to know his voice. Through the chastising that you are enduring today, because a lot of you are going through some things. I'm going through some things, but God got it. It don't defeat me. It don't determine who I am. Because I know who I am in Jesus Christ. And I know what the word has promised me. I stand on his word. That Bible that God has given us is our instructions. And we have to take that word and apply it and learn it and study it. It's our instruction in living in this world. And if we don't take the instructions and apply it, then we have the tendency to go the wrong way. So fight not, saints. God is the Lord that brings me into confinement. Is God doing this to me or is it the devil? This is when you have to know truth and error. And this is how you have to understand, Lord, if this is your voice. How do you know this is his voice? By spending time with him. The devil speaks too. He speaks to you as well. It is for thy good and for his glory. So endure all things with praises and thanksgiving. What am I saying? When you're going through trials and tribulations, be thankful. How can I be thankful through trials and tribulations? Because you know that God is in the midst of this and God got your back. And there is nothing that can happen to you that God already knows. So he wants you to walk this thing out. As if though you know who you are in him. See, that pleases him. He smiles. That's my daughter. She know I got her. That's my son. He knows me. He knows that I'm going to deliver him. But what is wrong with us today? We want a microwave deliverance. <laughs> what is that? Punch a button to get hot. And there it is. The Bible says some things come through fasting and praying. Some things will not move quickly. And why the Holy Spirit don't move those things quickly? 
Because he doing a work in you. If God don't move that thing quickly for you, this is where you have to get down into your closet and say, Lord, Holy Spirit, I am going through some things and I don't understand, but I need to hear from you, Lord God. When you begin to go to God and ask him, Lord God, show me what is going on, he will show you. There have been many times that I've been in, in positions and I had to go before the Lord. My husband couldn't help me because my Bible tell me salvation is a personal thing. I got to walk this thing out. This is between me and Jesus Christ. Can we pray together? Yes, we can. That's power in unity. But some things you have to go to the Lord for yourself. And that's what God wants. He wants us to rise up in Him. Rise up in the Lord. Quit let the devil beat you down. Some of the things that we are going through, we should have passed a long time ago. We should be to another level in Jesus Christ. And this is what the Holy Spirit is saying. I'm bringing a violent purification because I need to move quickly because some things is coming on this earth that need to be known now. So this is what he wants to do. He wants to move on you mightily, and he wants to deal with those secret things that you are hiding, and he wants to bring those things to the surface where you can move into that place where he wants you to be. And see, because all of you have a calling on your life, and if you can see yourself in the spirit realm, and you can see yourself maybe tomorrow or a year later, you'll be like, Lord God, I thank you for it. But see, here's the problem with us. If we can't see see it, we can't be moved by it. So we have to get in a position to understand what is going on in the spirit realm. And this is why it is very important to have the discerning of the spirit. You need to pray for it. You need to yearn for it. You need to desire it because you've got to have it in this end time. Pray for it. Ask God for it. Every day that I get up on my knees and pray, I ask God for wisdom, knowledge, understanding to make it through this day. I even ask for understanding and wisdom even in my cooking, how I dress, everything. Why? Because he is the center of my life and he knows everything about me. So who is him I need to go to? My father, our father, yeah. who takes care of me. He want to take care of you today. You don't have to be in the shape that you're in. Many of you out here, you're going through a financial problem. Things are getting expensive. You're asking the Holy Spirit. You've been crying out. You still don't see no way out. Your situation still haven't changed. This is a new year, 2016, and you're still in the same situation. Lord, what is going on? What is happening? He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from you. You know, time not going, everybody else, what, are you, what is God saying? Did you, can you get my word? Quit running out the prophecy. Is anything wrong with prophesying? No. But don't let that be your first point of view. Just like God speaks to that prophet, and that prophet is, he wants to speak to you as well. But you're not giving him the opportunity to speak to you, to impart in you. And he desires to do that. In Isaiah 40, chapter verse 31 in the Amplified Bible reads, But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him, should change and renew their strength and power. They should lift their wings and mount up close to God as an eagle. Mount up to the sun. They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I become tired. If you wait on the Lord. See, some of you are tired and burnt out today because you have not waited on Him. You have went in your own strength. You have did it in your own strength. You chose to do this. You making a situation more difficult and you don't have to be difficult. But if you put it in his hand, the master hand, he got the plan. And he knows. God wants you to empty all things that bind you. His desire is for you to turn away from those things. We're living in a time, saints, that evil is increasing. And we as Christians need to be advancing. As evil increase, we should advance. Because we're going to need his strength 
his power in these days that we're living in. There are going to be hard things and hard times that come against us. But when our lives are planted in his presence, then the things that come against us don't have the same impact. So we are rooted and grounded in Jesus, and we go to that next level in the Lord. Those things that used to bother us last week don't face us anymore. Because we have moved to that next level in God. So we can just look at him and say, oh, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I cast you out to go and flee from me now. Because Jesus Christ, God, he has given me authority. And I take authority over rest now in Jesus' name. And you walk and go about your business because Jesus Christ, God. See, if you pray about a situation and you keep nagging and going back and forth, that tells me that you're not sure. Make your election sure. This is what he's after. This is what he wants. Knowing who you are in Jesus Christ. In Colossians, the third chapter, verse 5 in the Amplified Bible says, So kill, deaden, deprive of power, but even desire lurking in your members. Those animals' impulses and all that is earthly and that is implored in sin, sexual vice, impurity, sexual appetite, Unholy desires and all greed and convectionness, for that is adultery. The defying of self and other created things instead of God. What is God saying? I believe what the Holy Spirit is saying to you today. The Lord is saying it's time for us to run with the horses. It's time for us to run in power. It's time for us to run in strength. He is saying that it is time for us for promotion. It's time for you to be promoted. It's time for you to rise up in him. What he's saying is, get ready to change, to rise up and embrace a new level of maturity. Because he is calling maturity in the saints today. And he wants you to rise up to that level and rise up and take your position and take the promotion that he desires to give to you today. He ready to take you to the next level, maturity, and conquer whatever it takes. And no matter what stands in your way, he wants to take you to that next level in him. You are his people. He loves you today. And there is nothing, no good thing that he will withhold from you. But he wants you to trust him today. And do you trust him? Do you know him? Do you desire to know him? But if you desire to know him, then open up your heart and let him in. And say, Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired, Lord. I no longer want to be this way. I'm tired at night, Lord, going, going on the internet, looking at porno, pornography. I'm tired of that. I no longer want that to control me anymore. I don't want that, Lord. I'm tired of masturbating. I'm tired of this, Lord. Those are sins. Those are things that sticks in your nostril that you hate and you do not like. And you say, Lord God, those things that you hate, I hate. Those things that you love, I love. So if you love those things that God loves and you hate those things that God hates, then you decide for a purified Holy Ghost change. Are you tired? Are you here at this camp this weekend because you are tired? You won't change. You had deliverance after deliverance. And the doors keep opening and opening and opening and open. When will it stop? So if it's you here today, and you're tired, and you won't change, stand to your feet. And I want you to take this moment, take this moment, and ask the Holy Spirit, search your heart. And if there's anyone that you are holding any unforgiveness with, rather than living a date, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to come in and be Lord. Because he's here. He's already here. He's just waiting on you to open up your heart and let him in. So take a moment. And once you do that, you can be seated. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as I stand with my wife in agreement. Yes. And Father, as many are seeking... Seeking prayer, 
in the area of unforgiveness, of bitterness, yes. or resentment for anybody living or dead. I stand with my wife. Yes. Is there anybody living or dead? There's unforgiveness, there's bitterness, there's resentment. Whether there's hatred of parents, whether there's hatred of mother, or hatred of father, or hatred of sister, or hatred of brother, yes. or hatred of aunts, or hatred of uncles. Yes. Father, we pray that they will seek forgiveness now and repent of that now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we also pray that I stand with my wife, Father. Whether there be those in the midst or they have an unforgiving spirit against an ex-spouse or ex-wife or ex-husband who are still holding bitterness and resentment towards a, a, a form of marriage or a previous marriage that ended up in separation or even ended up in divorce. And Father, we stand as we pray for them, whether these people are living or whether they're dead, we pray that they will seek forgiveness by the power of the Holy Spirit at this time. Uh, whether they're holding any unforgiveness of, with any one of any color or nationality or race, mm -hmm. we pray that they will dig deep and dig deep in their hearts now in the name of Jesus to seek the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the areas of forgiveness. Or whether they've been hurt by, by apostles or they've been hurt by pastors or hurt by prophet or hurt by a teacher or whether they've been hurt by an evangelist or whether they've been hurt by their former churches that they came from but there was a loss of vision and there was division. I pray for their forgiveness now in the name of Jesus. They will seek your holy precious face that you will be able to minister deep down, deep down in their hearts. And even in the area of presumptuous sins or hidden sins, I pray as I stand in agreement with my wife that they will stand and seek your face and ask for forgiveness and repent that your spirit, O oh God, can begin to move upon them in Jesus Christ's name. And you may be seated if you finish. And as you've been seated, repeat after me. I forgive those who have rejected me and been bitter and rebelled against me. Please forgive me for rejection, bitterness, and rebellion against others in God. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, Master, and Savior, I command the spirits to manifest. I identify and reveal them myself. I command the families of rejection, bitterness, and rebellion to come out now in Jesus' name. Tell it to go. To go rebellion. Go now. Out of me. I want no place of you. Go leave me now in Jesus' name. I confess my sexual sins, and I ask you to replace them under your blood. I renounce them, and I am truly sorry for participation. I repent, and I ask for forgiveness. I ask you to cleanse, heal, and deliver me. Jesus became a curse for me on the cross and blotted out the handwriting of ordinance against me. I ask that the Holy Spirit reveal other sexual offenses in my life that I or my ancestors have committed. I confess relationships with their activities, thoughts, desires, attitude as sin, preoccupying, preoccupation with sensual desires, appetite, and indulgence. Come out of the people now in Jesus' name. Say, come out of me now in Jesus Christ's name. I come against the spirit of masturbation. I command you to lose God's people now in Jesus' name. God's people in Jesus' name. Give me one big cough. All over this place, give me one big cough. Come out, out of God's people now. I command you to go. Spirit of, come out now. Masturbation, sexual sins. Out of God's people now in Jesus' name. Come on, out. You know who they are. You know. Come on, out. Tell them to go. Leave me now in Jesus Christ's name. I break your power and I command you to lose God's people and let them go now in Jesus Christ's name. I come against hatred, 
unforgiveness out in Jesus Christ's name. Loose God's people and let them go now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Out of God's people. I bind the spirit of fear. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but love and power and of a sound mind. I come against the spirit of fear. Fear. Fear of heart attacks. Fear of water. I come against you. I break your powers and I command you to go and loose them now. Come on, one big call for them again. Come on, call those things out. Come on, out. Come on, out. Move now. I put you on notice and I command you to go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I command you to loose God's people and let them go now. Come on, out of there. Masturbation. I command you to go out of God's people. Come on, out. Sexual sins. Out. Out. Loose God's people and let them go now in Jesus Christ's name. Come on. Masturbation. That's it. Come on. Out of God's people. Loose them now and let them go in Jesus Christ's name. We break your power and we command you to go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I come against mind control. Feel like I'm losing my mind, going out of my mind. I come against that spirit and I command you to go and loose God's people now in Jesus Christ's name. I come against all back problems. Feel like your, your back is about to break. We come against that. I come against back problems and I command you to loose God's people and let them go now in Jesus Christ's name. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, come on, tell them to go. Come on, loose you right now. Say, loose me and let me go now in Jesus Christ's name. I come against sex dreams. I break your power and I command you to loose God's people now and let them go. I come against the spirit of Ichabus. I come against the spirit of Succubus. I command you to loose God's people and let them go now in Jesus Christ's name. We bind you in the name of Jesus. We cast you out and I command you to go now in Jesus Christ's name. Come on, one more big call for the Cross those things out. Tell them to go and loose me now. You cannot stay here. I command you to loose me now in Jesus Jesus Christ's name. Selfishness. Spirit of selfishness. Come on out of God's people and let them go now in Jesus Christ's name. Come on out. Pornography. Come out of God's people and let them go. All sexual sins. Out of the tongue. Out of the throat. Out of the esophagus. I command you to go and loose God's people. Out of the tongue. Out of the lips. I command you to go. The craving. The desire. I command you to loose God's people and let them go now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Tell us to go. Leave me now in Jesus Christ's name. I no longer want to be a part of you. I renounce you today. Loose me now and let me go. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I come against burning lust. Burning lust. I break your power and I command you to go in Jesus Christ's name. Go. Say, loose me now and let me go in Jesus Christ's name. I fall out of agreement with you. I no longer want you to be a part of me any go. I command you to go and loose me now in Jesus Christ's name. This is God's temple and it's the Holy Ghost that rise in here. Not lust, but the Holy Ghost live on the inside of me. And I command you to loose God's people and let them go now. Jesus Christ live on the inside of you. Say, I claim the victory today. I claim the victory today. I claim my healing today. I receive my healing today. Say, go and leave me now. Anything that is in me that is not like God, go and leave me now. And you know what they are. Ask the Holy Spirit to shine a spotlight on it and claim the victory over those things in Jesus Christ's name. We command those spirits to go. Come on, one more call for me. One big call. Come on, out of the throat, out of the esophagus, out of the tongue, burning lust, burning desires, out of there. In the name of Jesus, I cast you out. I come against all sex. I burn you in the name of Jesus. I cast you out and I command you to lose God's people and let them go in Jesus Christ's name. Come on, out of there. In the name of Jesus Christ. I come against the spirit of fornication. I come against you right now. I come against the spirit of adultery. I cast you out and I command you to go. I come against the spirit, no love. Don't know how to receive love. Don't know how to give love. I come against that spirit now and I cast you out and I command you to go and lose God's people and let them go. No sex in the marriage. I hold back my stuff because he made me mad. I'm not going to give him any sex. I come against that spirit. No love. I come against you. I break your power and I command you to go and lose God's people all over this room. What will be called? Come on, cough it out right now. Go and leave me now. I don't want nothing to do with that spirit. I don't want nothing to do with that spirit. Go out of the tongue, out of the lungs, out of the esophagus. I come against.
it's a craving, the desire, or the addiction of it. And I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ, and I cast you out, and I command you to lose God's people all over this place. I come against hidden sin, secret stuff. I come against you. Come up out of God's people. We expose you. We put you on notice, and we come against you, and we command you to go and lose God's people, and let them go now in Jesus Christ's name. I come against the spirit of pride. I break your power and I command you to go. The spirit of pride leads God's people now in Jesus Christ's name. Go, pride. Go out. God cannot use you because of your pride. I command that spirit to go and loose me now in Jesus Christ's name. Tell the spirit of pride to go and lead me now. I fall out agreement with you. I want nothing to do with you. Loose me now and let me go. Come out of that pride. We cast you out and we command you to go and lose God's people right now in Jesus Christ's name. I come against the spirit of abortion. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I cast you out and I command you to go and lose God's people. I come against you. I break your powers. You cannot stay here. You will not live there. You will not dwell there. You have no place there. And I command you to go and lose God's people. All over this place, one more call for me. Come on, it's time to be set free. You don't want to leave here in the train. You want to be delivered and set free. Tell us to go and loose me now in Jesus Christ's name. I come against the spirit of rage. If I don't have my way, I come against temper tantrum. If I don't have my way, if, if they don't let me do this, if they don't let me do that, they don't know me, I would do this. I come against the spirit of rage. I come against the spirit of anger. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I cast you out and I command you to go and loose God's people all over this place. And I command you to go now in Jesus Christ's name. Now come out, rage. Out of God's people. Come out. Out in Jesus Christ's name. I command you to go and loose them now in Jesus Christ's name. My mama didn't play, so I don't play. My daddy didn't play, so I don't play. I come against that spirit. I'm like my mama. I'm like my daddy. I command those spirits to go and loose God's people now in Jesus Christ's name. I come against the spirit of rejection. They reject me. They don't like me. I feel like the lost sheep of the family. Nobody loves me. They don't care about me. I feel like I'm all alone in this world. I come against the lonely spirit. I come against the rejection spirit. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I cast you out and I command you to go and lose sight. People now all over this place. Come on, one more call for me. Call it up right now in Jesus Christ's name. Rejection. I bind you and I cast you out and I command you to go in Jesus Christ's name. Come out of that rejection. Go. Lose sight. People and let them go. I bind the spirit of fear. Come on, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And I cast you out and I command you to go. Loose her now and let her go. Loose them and let them go now in Jesus Christ's name. We almost finished. Come out of here. Out in Jesus Christ's name. I come against the spirit of envious, envious of your neighbor, envious of what they got. They got more than me. I don't have nothing. I come against that spirit. I come against the spirit of jealousy. Jealous of what they got. Jealous of who they are. I break that spirit out for you and I pray your identity, your true identity will come forth now in Jesus Christ's name. The identity that Jesus Christ has given you. I come against that spirit of selfishness. I come against that spirit of pride. I break your power and I command you to go and lose God's people. Jesus Christ dwells on the inside of you, and I claim your victory over God's people in Jesus Christ's name. I come against the spirit of alcohol in my secret place. I go and have my drink. I come against that spirit. I call you forth right now, and I bind you in the name of Jesus. I cast you out, and I command that spirit to come up out of the lungs, come up out of the tongue, the craving, the desire, the taste. I command it to come out of that now in Jesus Christ's name. I come against drugs, reefer, uppers, downers. I come against chemicals, medication. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I cast you out and I command you to go and lose God's people now. Come on out of that drug addiction, drug addiction, a mad pain medication. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, continue to just ask God to move on you. 
stay in, stay in the spirit. Don't, don't, don't come out. Just forget about what's going on. This is a, a personal walk with Jesus. You want to be set free today. And the Holy Spirit is here. And he desires to set you free today. Don't let this opportunity to pass you by. Forget about your name, but this is about you and Jesus Christ. Receive it today. Receive the victory. You no longer want to be the same. And the Holy Spirit here to change you today. I'm tired and I'm sick and tired of being the same old way. All you got to do is say yes to him. Yes to my will. And he's ready. Yes. Come on out. Tell him to go and lead you. Come on, let's stay in the spirit. Come on, let's keep staying in the spirit. Keep praying. And if you know how to speak in tongues, pray in your tongue language. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name, Lord. We give you all the honor and all the glory. Oh, Lord, it's you that brings deliverance. It's you that moves, Lord. This is not about us. This is all about you. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for dining with us. Oh, yes, Lord. We thank you for sitting in the midst of us today. We thank you for setting your people free, Lord God. Oh, Lord, you say we have not because we ask not, Lord. And, Lord, we ask you today, Lord God, for restoration, Lord God. We claim the purification today, Lord God. We claim the victory today, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord God. You died on the cross for us, Lord. We died on the cross that we may have life. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. Lord, you died on the cross for us. And Lord, we thank you. We don't take it lightly. And Lord, if we haven't thanked you enough, we want to thank you right now. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for giving your only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Lord, you didn't have to do it, but you did it, Lord Jesus. Lord, you did it because you love us. You did it because we are your children. And Lord, we thank you today, Lord God. We thank you today, Lord God, for what you have done for us, Lord. You say when you died on the cross, you did away with poverty, sickness, and death. And we don't have to carry none of those things anymore. And Lord, we thank you right now, Lord God, that we are free in you, Lord God. And we claim it to victory today. And Lord, we thank you for what you're about to do in our lives in Jesus Christ's name. Now, Holy Spirit, I call forth, Lord God, everyone that feel like they've been in the pit. I call you out of the pit right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pull you out of the pit in the name of Jesus Christ. I pull your finances out of the pit right now. I pull your children out of the pit right now. And our children have been in the pit for a long time. But we call them out today. I pull them out right now in Jesus Christ's name. I pull them out right now. I pull your healing out of the pit. I put it out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we claim the victory all over this place in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Holy Spirit, we bless you. And we thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. Now, Lord God, I bless you. Let's love on him. I love you, Jesus. Let's tell him how much we love him. And we appreciate you. You didn't have to do it, but you did it, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for doing what you did, Lord. Lord, we bless you today. We love you. Forgive me for not spending time with you like I should have. Lord, forgive me, Lord God. Give me another chance, Lord, because we know that you are God of a second chance. And Lord, we cry out today, Lord God. We cry out for your mercy, Lord. We cry out for deliverance, Lord. We cry out for purification, Lord. We cry out, Lord God, for our children, Lord God. Lord, we claim it right now, Lord God. We execute judgment on the enemy today, Lord God. And we loose the spirit of judgment on the enemy right now. And we claim the victory over God's people now in Jesus Christ's name. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord God. We thank you for healing virtue power, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we are created in your image, Lord. We look like you. We just like you, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for who you are, Lord God. I thank you for blessing us today. I thank you for delivering your people because these are your people, Lord God. Thank you for assisting you with your work, with your people, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, I bless you. And I thank you, Lord God. 
I love you. I sense the Lord saying, I love you too. I love you, dear. I desire for you to have good things. I desire for you to come up out of the pit. I hear your cry. I see your tears. I see them. I love you today because you're mine. I love you. I love you. And the Holy Spirit, I ask that you shine the spotlight. I ask that you bring conviction upon your people. That they will keep their deliverance. That they'll be conscious about the things that they speak. They say the people they involve in, the company they keep. I pray, Lord God, that Lord, that you will bring conviction upon their hearts, where they'll be very careful about their deliverance, and they won't take it lightly today, Lord God. But they will be serious about this, Lord, because we serve a serious God, and we know, Lord God, that you are God. Now, Lord, I thank you, and I bless you for these precious souls. I come against every backlash right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Even as Zechariah prayed a wall of fire, I pray a wall of fire around your people, that you would protect them, that you would keep them, that you would bring healing to them in Jesus Christ's name. I ask, Lord God, that you would go before them and make the crooked places straight. And Lord God, I ask that you would rain down fire on the enemy, Lord, against your people, Jesus. And Lord, I thank you right now today, Lord God, that you are a miracle working power. And I thank you, Lord, that you are sealing them in the spirit realm right now. I sense that he covering you, Lord God, with his wings. Now, Lord God, I ask that you will protect him from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. And I ask that you will seal them, Lord God, in your kingdom. And I ask that, Lord God, that, Lord, that you will rain down fire on them, Lord God. And I pray for your manifestation power to execute right now, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that you will send your power, send your anointing, send your glory, show yourself mightily to your people. And, Lord God, just because they make that sacrifice this day. I pray right now, Lord God, that you would give them everything that they put out, Lord God. Give them a hundredfold, double for their portion in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord God, that you would not forget them. And you would not forget their children. But most importantly, don't forget them. Now, Lord, I bless you. I give you the praise. And I give you the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Give me the praise. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.